don't know, it was kind of a decision to be like, right, we'll go there, get some more games in our belt, get some experience. Um, so yeah, no, I did, I don't know, I did kind of like, I don't know, just make you know yourself a bit better, I suppose, like test yourself for a different environment. And then the next night you're in France looking around, not, not being able to speak the language. Um, but no, it was really good. Like, I'd probably recommend it. Like, like it was different. Like, obviously, when you drop it somewhere, you can't speak the language and you don't have a clue where you are. Like, I think first day we went out in the car, we were on the side of the road for about 10 minutes. We were just lucky that where we were, <laughs> it was a quiet place. But. Welcome to Show Me The Money Rugby League TV. Uh, it's a player's focus with... The Davies twins, how are you doing, lads? No, good time, mate. Thank you. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, um, played at the weekend. Got a few, got a few shiners, haven't you? Faces yeah. looking. It's not my first, not my last. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's, ugly, he's ugly enough as it is, anyway. So <laughs> he's all yeah. Brilliant. Um, so I think we normally when we do this, we start from start from your youth. When how did how did you get into rugby? Obviously, we discussed it a bit before, didn't we? Let's yeah. tell that story. It's Brilliant. Yeah, it's been a long one, really. But so in Wales, obviously it's rugby union, like yeah. it's mad compared to league. Uh, so we started playing that up until I think we played it up until we were sixteen, really. Um, but we probably started playing rugby league when we was about fifteen. Yeah, it would have been in school. So like I think it was a uh, really good rugby union team. So then it was um, just a bit of something else to do, really. So we'd won like a national competition in rugby union, and then. Coach just happened to have played rugby league before, so then he sort of just funneled us into that. We didn't really know what we were doing. We still played like we were playing rugby union, but it sort of worked for us. And then um, I think well, we ended up getting to the final of champion schools. So then that sort of just encouraged it a bit then. And then yeah, sort of pushed on from there. Um, champion like, schools, you said you played at Odsall, didn't you? In the final, what was that yeah, score? Like you said you got. Uh, oh, I don't know. I think I've uh, put that to the back of the memory. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got pumped in the end. I think I thought we all thought we were in, in final and we was gonna. Uh, Turn them over, but yeah, now we got pumped in the end. Yeah, no, they had like a wakey scholarship team, so I think we were all clueless. None of us knew what we were doing, really, so I think yeah, it didn't end up too uh, too great. You said on the same team, Regan Grace played with you, didn't you? He was on the same. Yeah, so that uh, so not in school team, but that was um, that was in like our academy team. Yeah, because um, he's from close to where we're from. Um, so yeah, and I, we played with him when we was younger. I yeah, because we pushed on to like a, there was a bit of an academy set up at the time. Uh, in Wales and then we put uh, that was like scholarship age so like 15, 16 so then he would have been in that team um, and yeah so we were pretty competitive really because we ended up playing against a few Super League teams um, like Widnes at the time uh, Wigan Wakefield uh, there was a few others as well like London we had like a regular fixture list with them so that was that sort of um, worked on from there then from the, from the schools got selected picked up in that and then that sort of carried it on a bit Brilliant, yeah, that's, that's yeah, it was just, <laughs> interesting way, isn't it? Yeah, that yeah. interesting way to get into rugby. So a bit about that, um, a bit about the academy. What was that like? And is that do you know if that's still there today? It was, or a, it was a decent setup, wasn't it? Because like yeah. I think at the time they had they had links with Wigan, so it was well. I think it was South Wales Scorpions, if I'm not wrong, and they would send their fringe or younger lads down to play for the first team. But then they'd also send coaches down for the the academy age. So like we had a few co- we had coaches down a few times and like that helped, and there was a, a coach called uh, Dave Clark. I think he was something to do with Wigan at some point in time. Um, so and it was a decent setup. I think we trained maybe three times a week. Yeah. And it was just it was consistent, uh, and it was like it was probably like an academy setup. It was probably not as regular, um, but it was a good setup and like a lot like a lot a lot. Obviously, we did quite well with it. I don't think they run it anymore. I think they do it through the college. So I'm not sure how they funded it before, um, but now they just do it through uh, a college in um, Cardiff called College Camoy. But I don't think it's as like a, a settled setup as it as it was when we was there. So we got we got quite lucky with that. Like yeah, yeah cause which which other lads come through that system? They, you know, um, there's a few boys still playing at, um, South Wales now. Yeah. Um, so uh, Regan Grace, I don't think he got picked up through this because I think for our actual age group. Because there was always sort of different things going on and it would, like the funding would change, or the landscape would always change with it. But then I think no one really got picked up for our age, although we had a pretty decent team. I think then Widness came in the year after and sort of made a bit more of a, like a, a strategic link with the year younger and picked up yeah. a few boys and took them away. So from our team, it was just Regan, really. But he got picked up later on after all this academy 
because um, I think he, he went back to play uh, rugby union for his local amateur side and then that's where he got picked up uh, like I think after uh, whilst we were doing it uh, a few of us went to like different clubs um, just like just to have a look around the facilities or whatever and do a few like training days um, but nobody actually got picked up because after the Wales game where we we uh, it was Wales like a cat uh, Wales is like 16s against England academies I think they call it I think we'd lost by two points and maybe six points so then after that like we thought there might be some interest yeah. from whatever but it just yeah just nothing ever like uh, came to fruition after that so shame right isn't it so not, yeah, so. yeah no it would have been nice like but uh, yeah I suppose that's the way it happens like what if, what if you're getting into Welsh rugby league what would you say has got to not necessarily change but what, what's got um, to be more put in place to I think it's just the opportunities people get like yeah. obviously people need an opportunity to play whatever and like they need just good coaching as well because like there is there is a lot of good players like I went to watch um, I think that college come out of set up were playing uh, against like a Halifax um, college team and there was like in, in that team there was there was some proper good players but obviously they just need a bit more coaching to understand the differences between well like in terms of just rugby players or athletes I think they are like it is decent but there needs to be a more structured like approach to it rather than uh, well, he's he's good. Like we'll, we'll get him, or he's six foot six. We'll take him, or he can run hundred meters in whatever. Do you know what I mean? Rather than just like a physical thing, they need some more opportunities for better coaching. I think. But yeah, obviously, obviously like, rugby is so big in Wales. Obviously, yeah, after yeah, the rugby union, yeah, after the rugby union, it's a shame that they can't get more of a. Yeah, because I think it's a lot. There is a lot of crossover. Enough players, aren't they, as well? Yeah, like I don't know. Most of the positions from rugby union, you could probably chuck him in. I mean, maybe not the fat ones, like, who yeah. were scrummaging all day, but, um, no, like, I think it's more so consistency, because even with our age group, that which had probably a decent crack at it, there was still, like, a year there where maybe, year, a, year, a year where it went well, and then a year where funding maybe dropped out, or then, I don't know, if there had a bit more consistency, and then, obviously, if you funnel people into academies at younger ages, because I don't know really if there's a proper sort of plan all the way through, I mean... Because like there are a lot of good players, and like a lot of people probably could have gone on to do things, but and obviously the location-wise and logistics of it, which does make it more difficult. But I think there is obviously an opportunity there with boys who are playing rugby regularly, and yeah, because a lot of people, there's a lot of it as well. Yeah, and a lot of people follow or like the rugby union setups. I think they would be decent because obviously, like well, we, I'd rather uh, league probably is better suited for me because I'm about five foot four. <laughs> <laughs> On a good day, um, but yeah, and it's like because obviously, the, like the way they look at stuff, obviously they do prioritize size a lot. Whereas I think in rugby league, you don't need as much. And it, uh, obviously, you need like there's different body shapes or whatever that suit league better than what they do union. So I think you could pick a lot of people up like that. But obviously, just need they need the opportunity to do so. So yeah, but it all comes down to money at the end of the day, doesn't it? So it does it's just uh, yeah. getting somebody to actually back it probably. Yeah, it's a shame. Like I said, it's just such a shame they don't because it's where these these places that play a lot of rugby. There's that many. There's that many players. It's not. It's not football. Yeah. In, you know what I mean? A lot of a lot of in in <coughs> England they use the football excuse. I think we had. Yeah. Don't want to say Jimmy Max says oh because everyone plays football they don't get the players well in, in Wales it's rugby in it. I know it's yeah, different through rugby, through, but like like, yeah. like you said they've got the frame. They'll have the stature. They'll have that teaching throughout the whole childhood. They've just got to tweak and yeah, play yeah. a bit more league, and they'll it could it could be a hot. I feel like it could be a hotbed of rugby. It probably yeah, should be a hotbed of rugby league, whether it is. Even if it's not as big as rugby union, it can still it should be the second biggest sport, shouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, even without sort of like systems being set up, I think there's still a, quite a few boys who sort of move to different clubs or like transition through and like they're quite regularly in like champion schools, for example. Like the teams won't have a clear what they're doing, but they're just decent actually rugby teams or yeah. like decent decent athletes. So then often there's a, a Welsh t- Welsh team in a final or there's maybe two or three teams, yeah. and they always seem to do all right. It's just obviously later on, just the education just catches up and then they sort of get passed by. I mean, at that age, like 15, 16, where maybe academies are a lot more intensive and like they're just learning a lot more, getting a good environment. So it's just, yeah, it's just opportunities more than anything, I think. Yeah, really. So then you've gone from there and then you've ended up going to Leeds, aren't you? Leeds University, yeah, how did yeah. that happen? Yeah, so, that, well, that was just another like chance one, really. So uh, we went to Leeds on like a... Yeah, we just went there for a few days, trained with like their 16s 
and eighteens like academy, um, like got shown around the facilities or whatever. Um, but then there wasn't really like I don't know a pathway for us to stay up there and play or whatever. So they said the next best thing would be to go to uni there. Um, when we met um, Bob Pickles, he suggested that would be the best thing we do. Yeah. Um, so uh, we kind of we had the year then at South Wales, but then we always knew that we was going to go uni in Leeds. Because uh, at the time, I think they'd won so many championships in a row or whatever. Um, so then that was just like the selling point for us to go up there. Yep. And we thought if we put ourselves in, in the mix in Leeds, then obviously it's, a be- it's the best place to be to have like opportunities. Yeah, and I'd never really thought about working full-time job. So I just thought, yeah, I better go <laughs> to uni. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> live, that, live that lifestyle for a bit. Yeah, so then you've gone there and then you've ended up How's that? How how have you ended up getting picked up from there? Then that's the next. Yeah, step it's just up. bizarre, like obviously how how people cross over and whatever. But in, in the last year when we were at South Wales Scorpions, uh, there was a sort of a takeover and they were going to change the name and whatever. But the new the new owner would come in. Uh, it was originally from Halifax, I think it's maybe Siddle, and then he knew someone at Halifax then. And then I think in our second year of uni, we'd uh, then gone to Halifax Reserves just through this bloke speaking to someone, and then. Uh, we were there for a year or two in the reserves and then signed first team there. So it's weird how things have happened and I don't think it's ever been like a conscious decision. It's just sort of, that's what's happened and that's where we are, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we were saying before, obviously, how everyone in rugby league knows each other, don't we? Yeah, it's so a pretty small circle. circle. Some, <laughs> some angle or another, yeah. everyone, everyone knows each other. And then, um, so then you played at Halifax a couple of years enjoyed it yeah yeah, yeah. no it was, it was really good like looking back on it now especially like it was it was proper good like like it's a club full of good people and like at the time then they had the reserves yeah so and that was like the selling point for us and that's how we got like chances to play and learn um but yeah no there was definitely some characters there as well uh <laughs> when, when we went there so yeah no we got looked after well to be fair and then, and then you took the big decision the more recent we've caught up more recent you made the business my God, the big decision to move to France. Yeah. yeah, that was another one. Didn't properly like think it over. It's just sort of like, yeah, I'll just that's the next thing to do, really. I just sort of <laughs> went out there, and the next minute you're in France, looking around, not not being able to speak the language. Um, but no, it was really good. Like I'd probably recommend it. Like, like it was different. Like obviously, when you drop to where I can't speak the language and you don't have a clue where you are. Like I think first day we went out in the car, we went on the side of the road for about ten minutes. We we're just lucky that where we were, <laughs> it was a quiet place, yeah. but. Um, yeah, it was just different. And you sort of just yeah, you get to, you just get to know yourself and like I don't know. It is it is a lot more different than obviously living around here, being a bit more comfortable and it does sort of take you out of your comfort zone. But well, yeah, I really like, enjoyed it. I think a, a, not a problem with rugby league players, but definitely something that they don't do often is they don't go and travel to see the world. I mean, mm, most of them yeah, stay yeah. in stay in Yorkshire, stay in Lancashire, stay where obviously <laughs> fair where they can get a job playing rugby. Yeah, but yeah. How much did you grow as people, grow as thing? And because I sort of a bit about <coughs> obviously I went to America and did sort of like the travel, just move somewhere and yeah. figure it, figure it out, make it work, and it it helped me become the man I am today. You said it, it, it yeah, did a lot for you. You have got to figure it out. Like we've always lived, well, we've lived away from home for a long time. So since we was like seventeen, going to uni, and then we've moved to like different places or whatever. But you kind of still like. I don't know, kind of still like comfortable in a way because you make friends and then, do you know what I mean, you're there and it'd probably be easy to stay there. Um, but we just thought, we just wanted to get some more games under our belt and just get some more experience really because like for us, like that's probably the negative that like obviously you don't have the experience of the academy yeah. like to fall back on. We're like, oh, well, he's been here. So like it's kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of a decision to be like, right, we'll go there, get some more games in our belt, get some experience. Um so yeah, no, I did, I don't know, I did kind of like, you know, just make you know yourself a bit better, I suppose, like test yourself for a different environment. It's like, it is hard when you can't speak the language as well. Yeah. Like, before we went, I think we had one lesson, I thought, oh, I'll be all right with this. But <laughs> not, absolutely not a clue. Like, it was, yeah. in the end, it was nice coming home and hearing someone who could speak English. So yeah, so, no, I think you're just ignorant to it, like, you just think, oh, they able to speak English, you'll be all right. And then first day you walk in a shop and no one's got a clue. And then, like, even like even, even with the team, there was a few Aussies there when we went. But then they ended up leaving. Um, but then it was only one or two who could speak, like, broken broken English. 
I mean, my French weren't great either, so like <laughs> there was a bit of a language barrier. I think we were just lucky the coach could speak English. Yeah. And then like, obviously when you're, when you're playing, it weren't so bad, that was all right. But like, like day to day, you're trying to have a conversation, it was difficult. But then yeah, you just sort of learn, learn how to handle yourself. And like, obviously, you do, yeah, you do, you do learn about yourself a lot more just being in that sort of environment where like, it's not so comfortable. Cause like the first day you're there, you're looking around and you're like, bloody hell, I'm in France. <laughs> Yeah, different country. <laughs> like it's not, it's not like you can drive back home or anything. Yeah. Now, yeah. when you think you're moving to France, you just think you're moving to Paris or something, don't you? Like, not like, <laughs> not like a little town in France where nobody cares. Like, so, so yeah. No, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was nice coming back, but it was a good experience. Like, I, like for a younger player who's like maybe struggling for like game time or whatever or experience, I would like suggest it because yeah. like it is, it's probably like it's a different avenue, isn't it? But it's like it is a decent one, I would say, and like obviously. There's perks to it as well, where you can go and see a bit. Because a yeah, lot of our, a lot of our games were Saturdays, um, so we would like we play on a Saturday and then just drive somewhere and like and stop there for a few days. So it was a good a good way to see the see the world. And where then, have you been and where would you recommend? Oh, Barcelona. Barcelona. Yeah, 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 no, it's a good, it's a nice place. Yeah, there. San Sebastian as well. Like you no, know, there's a few places like because in south of France it's like an hour to the hour to the mountains, hour to the beach. So like. It's perfect location, really. You can just drive it on the coast. It was, it was good, and like the setup there, even like probably underestimated it a bit because like they saw they saw you a house and a car and whatever, and then like even the standard of rugby, like that's pretty good as well. Like, but you probably did really under, underestimate it. Like it's it's a decent league, and like you see, there's, well, there's quite a few players signed in that league now, like James Maloney, yeah. uh, Nathan Peets, like a few, few NRL players, and like it's yeah, it's decent. It's probably underestimated to be honest. Does the setup all right? What's the, what are the other clubs like? What is it? Is the yeah, it's pretty competitive. Yeah, like, no, it's probably not as no, it's probably not as consistent. I would say as like uh, the championship, whereas you've got like you have what like thirty games like every round. But like the, I'd say probably the top half of the competition it is like competitive, and like it is obviously the ones who spend the most money that are the better teams. But it is it is competitive. Like yeah, and uh, the style of play is a bit different as well. Yeah. Like it's. I don't know, it's hard to describe because like watching it first time, like we'd ask the Aussie because you're probably the only person we could speak to. I <laughs> said, oh, what, what's it like? And then even just playing it, like you just couldn't really uh, put a finger on it. But it was it was good and it was just like a different like, sort of style. Like it was a bit looser, a bit quicker. Yeah, but, not as much wrestling stuff. Like yeah. if you're waiting for a third man, just don't, because they're probably having a cigar somewhere there <laughs> on, on halfway. So, uh, so now it was different, but it was obviously just good, isn't it? Just to, to experience different things. Well, yeah, because I think I've, uh, from what you've told me, a good experience. I've been recommending. Well, am I like you said, young lads who might not yeah, have the opportunity yeah. to simply go over, and learn a bit about life, learn a bit about what it's like to challenge yourself and all that. And it, I, I think for the long run, it will do a lot of people's careers good. Yeah. And then obviously, the more talent that go over there, if that league becomes a genuine league that has enough, pa- obviously, it does have at the top. But the whole league becomes good enough. It'd be brilliant to have. Yeah, a European style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and obviously UK v UK v France and get that yeah, sort of what yeah. rugby union do, don't we? Obviously, so an extra opportunity as well to do something a bit different, like sort of take yourself out of that comfort zone. But yeah, we're good. But like, it was surprising how much the stereotype fits the French people as well. Like, yeah, it's just <laughs> crazy. Easy. Like you'd be having all on cheese and wine and all that. And like, yeah, yeah. Had, even on the bus, you like, had best red wine in there. Yeah, blo- yeah, blokes going off uh, in services, smoking and that. It was just, yeah, it was different. It was good though. If you had uh, snails and frog legs, to nah, I didn't. Too I, mean, I wouldn't go anywhere near that. Never no, actually tried. I would have like, but I don't know why. I just never actually did try it. So. Maybe next time we go away. Next time try some, yeah. I've had snails, they're good, I don't know, actually. No, no, not for me, I'm not going anywhere near it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then, yeah, to more modern times, then you've um, you've decided, that's when you got in contact with actually us, isn't it? At yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, your message does, give, yeah, give a bit, a bit, a bit about that. Yeah, about messaging, just, well, and then obviously from there move into yeah because the, the season out in France runs from like their winter to summer yeah I'm not sure why I think it maybe because it gets so hot up there now but um because we we finish about around around ten maybe yeah uh, so yeah we were back around ten for for our championship over here um so we wanted to sort something out and then obviously just small circle again like you sort of know people and that and then. Just sort of just through Twitter, I think, and then we just got in got in touch with you. We'd message you on um, on Twitter, and then just sort of went from there because obviously you wanted to get an opportunity back here, 
and just sort of play consistently all the way through. It's like we've sort of backed up two seasons almost. Um, and yeah, then ended up going to Workington. Sort of really enjoyed, really enjoyed that experience there. Like moved up there again. In Cumbria, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Mar- you've gone, you've Mar- gone to all the old. <laughs> <laughs> just just travelling about. Like. Yeah, you yeah, think well, about it everywhere now. Like. Yeah, no wonder the accent sounds like this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so then Cumbria, how did you find... How did you find all the yeah no the, the, pe- com- the people up, the people up there are actually like world yeah, class right. like yeah now like because I've heard it before where people say oh like oh Cumbrians are like yeah. nice but they are proper like proper nice and like I've never seen like so many volunteers like help out obviously because I've got I've been at work and I'm white even now but like uh, with both clubs like they've got I've never seen so many volunteers just be so keen to help out or whatever like it is it is nice and there's a lot of like good people up there. Well, that's what they've said about Workington. I know, obviously, it's really sad what's happening now, but they yeah, said yeah. a lot of the... Pla- when you speak to people, a lot of them are saying it's not the, the reason they want to make it work is for the volunteers, isn't it? Yeah, for the people yeah. who have been there for but 50 years. The kit man's been... How long has he been oh, there? Oh, I, I don't know, to be honest, but yeah, he's, he's, he's genuinely the yeah, world's nicest person. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> I've not heard a bad word about it. Everyone nice. talks about yeah, the famous like, working kit man. Like, first, uh, first day we were there, first game... Like I, I forgot to get my parents' tickets. Like they'd come up, driven up with all my stuff, and I get <laughs> pulling pulling at the ground, and I go, oh, "Shit, I forgot to sell them tickets." And then next minute they walk in, and then they've, they've been put in like the family VIP room or whatever. Like they've been given food and whatever. And like I hadn't sorted anything. I really told the kit man, and then he's told everyone else, and they've sorted it for us. Yeah. So like that's just what I like. They're just nice people. Up yeah. There. I think the first day we turned up as well. I think we was just gonna go do a bit of training or whatever. And there must have been about. 10 to 12 volunteers just have been out around the pitch do you know what I mean so it's like it is like there are proper good people up there yeah no it is I think from you lads and experience I've recommended two players I've recommended <laughs> France and Cumbria I think you should yeah. I think everyone a lot of players should go and visit Cumbria and actually give them a chance they say the travel stuff which it probably can be but if you're, if you're actually willing to go and live up there yeah. it's actually not a bad place to live either and I mean no to, to be fair for us it's a lot like back home yeah. plenty of green like obviously got the lakes and that as well so like you know, no it was good it sort of fit back in it sort of felt like I moved back home a little bit yeah and then obviously from there obviously it's really sad what happened but now you've uh, you've both yeah. moved on to different yeah, clubs yeah. You've, uh, I'm just glad to get rid of him like it's been a, it's been the best like six weeks ever just like not having to put up with him it's been class man so then you've uh, you've you've gone and you're playing at Whitehaven now, Kurt. How are you yeah, finding yeah. Whitehaven? Yeah, no. To be honest, it's been good. Like I was just, to be honest, I was just grateful that they give us an opportunity to start with, and then ever since I've gone there, like uh, John T and then all the boys then have just been class. Yeah. And like we, our last few weeks, we've had a few a few decent results. To be fair, so well from just being there, obviously speaking to all the boys and whatever, it's had a tough season with injuries, like because it is. You have got some like proper good players there and stuff, but. Like I don't think I've ever seen a team without, without having so many injuries or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, I've properly enjoyed my time there. Like it's been class. I I work. I I speak to Ash quite often, and then Aye. every time I'd, I think I'd get a phone call once a week, week saying, "Who have you got on loan? I need someone." <laughs> you have about three injuries. You've had about three injuries a game, haven't you? Yeah. Well, I've been seeing. I don't want to show you up, but I've been. I'm on Twitter. I'm scrolling through some of the White Haven pages. Aye. How good has this man been? How good has been? <laughs> Photos of Kurt with his hands up after a win. <laughs> and you, King of Whitehaven now, Kurt. Yeah. You enjoy it? I don't, I'm not sure about that. Like. <laughs> yeah, they must have been watching the same game. Like, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's just been good. Like I just enjoyed it to be honest. And like, yeah, just having some proper game time, or whatever. It's been good. And then yeah, so both of you recommend Cumbria for the lads who might be hesitant. You know what I mean? That I think any agency, any clubs work with that say, oh, Whitehaven, oh, yeah. Workington. Or after you, you, you you'd you'd say give it a go. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's easy to be like dismissive of opportunities like that, but it's just a bit different. Like obviously moving up there's a bit of like a challenge and like obviously it doesn't suit everyone. Yeah. But then yeah, no, the people up are a class, like the the area is actually a really nice place to live in as well. And then yeah, no, everyone's nice, like the rugby side of it, everyone loves it. Everyone's well keen for it. Yeah, no, they have got some like proper passionate fans and that, so yeah. <laughs> Well, they were uh, summer bash, weren't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're on a rave at summer bash. <laughs> yeah, about 15 pints in, weren't they? Swinging, they yeah. were going off. It was yeah, funny good, to see. Man. But I think with when people do move, I think the key is, I think what you lads are quite good at, you just dive in, don't you? You're not, yeah. You don't try to... You don't, you're you willing to like, yeah. learn about the area, give it a go. And I, I think yeah, that's I don't key. Know. I just don't, I don't think like I'm a either all or nothing, I think. So if yeah. I'm going to do something, I'll just do it properly. Um 
So yeah, I just I think it just helps, so doesn't it? Like when you move somewhere, just to like just get I don't know, just get uh, get used to it. Well, I say yeah. I'm probably because uh, I'm probably used to moving now, isn't it? Like we've moved so many times, it's just like yeah, yeah it's just I think you kind of kind of learn along the way, innit? So I, I maybe we're not I've been like that first time I've moved somewhere, but yeah, I just learn along the way. I think. So that's what I find. I think the ones who struggle stay stick home, don't they? They stick to the ways they do it at home. They're not willing to learn about a different yeah. way of giving life a go, are they? A lot of them stick to it. And then when that's not the same, it gets a bit, they get a bit... Yeah, yeah I think it's sort of, it's, that's the easiest thing to do as well. And I think, like, like, we live in France, like, going up for six months, like, once you first get there, you're sort of looking around thinking, it could be long this, but then it, <laughs> the time just goes quick. Like, it flies, like, you look, like, looking back, like, it's just flown. Yeah. Like, it was always, like, my grandmother says, it's a long time looking forward, but it's a short time looking back. And, like, it is, it is that. Yeah. Like... Export season flies under your feet, and then people are sort of still doing the same thing in the same places back home. So, it's yeah, it's one of them. If it's not any good, it's just an experience you learn from it. Yeah, great, great advice for anyone <laughs> listening. There you go, we can nail course, it. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and Connor, you're now at you're now at Dewsbury. How are you finding yeah, yeah. Dewsbury? No, I've been really enjoying it. Like, obviously, I think they're not at the best season. Obviously, I've yeah. been relegated, but I think the last four or five weeks I've been there have been really good. Like, the team's just been steadily improving, except against Batley, which didn't go too well in, in the bash. But, um, yeah, no, it's a really good setup. Like, I think with Finney and Casper coming in as coaches. And, yeah, no, I've really enjoyed it. I think it'll be, it'll be um, good next year. I think yeah. I'll be pushing to get back up straight away. Um, yeah, no, I've really enjoyed my time at, uh, so far. Finney is a new coach. I think this is his first coach. Yeah. yeah job in it as yeah, a yeah. first team. What rank Finney? What's yeah, no, really good. Like, obviously, I can't say anything, can't say anything bad about yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I've been really good since I've been... <laughs> I've been in there really good since I've been there. So I've learned learned a lot, like played a few different positions and like just sort of the detail there. And yeah, no, I've just been enjoying it. Sort of a good good feel around it. I know it's probably difficult having been relegated for him and sort of it's a bit of an awkward situation really coming in so late. But no, it's been really good. Um, I've learned a lot. And then going off your different positions, what where would you say <laughs> Connor is? You play, I think you played prop 13, second row. Yeah, anywhere in pack really. Yeah. I think I'm a bit too slow to go out, uh, out wide, but um, <laughs> no, 18th man probably. Be <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, nah, anywhere in forward really. I've just been, uh, I've been enjoying playing back row. It's been a bit different, but yeah, because I'm obviously I'm a bit small. I'm a bit smaller for like the the normal middle, but I guess I don't know either a ball playing loose or like a, a back rower. I'm not really too asked to be honest. As long as I've got boots on, it's alright. Yeah, I've seen uh, I've seen your recent clips. You've Figured out how to hit a line, haven't you? And you've been uh, yeah, scoring some nice up, tries. Pulled out from somewhere. I think yeah. one of us has got to get over the line anyway. I think he scored this <laughs> year. And then, yeah. So, what does the uh, what does the future hold for you both? Bit of a tough question. Where do you? Oh, I don't know. What's Maybe. the goal? What's the goal, lads? In I don't know. To be honest, I'll, I'm not like. Do you know what I mean? I'm not set on anywhere, but I just want to just. I don't know. Just keep on improving, really, and you know, getting some experience, improving, and just see how far I can take it. Um, I'm probably. I mean, I'm keen as mustard for anything, so to see, see obviously where the options are, and then, and then yeah, go from there really. Yeah, yeah, same. I think it's obviously just seeing what opportunities come and just making the most of them, and obviously just keeping on improving and getting a bit more experience, and yeah, just seeing where it goes. I think I don't know, probably something I've learned over the last couple of years. You can never really tell what's going to happen, but yeah, it's just <laughs> I mean, one of them. Yeah. Might, end, might end up somewhere wild, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, so twenty, you're, you're twenty nine. Would you would you aim to be full time? You've mentioned that you obviously your your mm. dream is to go full time and then get yeah. a chance one day. Yeah, no, it is something I want to do. Like my mates keep saying to me at the minute, like you're gonna get a job or something. Do you know what I mean? like, <laughs> they keep giving a stick, but uh, but yeah, no, it is something I want to do. Like like when I like it's always something I've wanted to do. Uh, whereas it, like obviously when we was younger, it was probably rugby union. But since we started league. It is something that I want to do. Uh, that's why I'm probably keen. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm not shy about it. So yeah, it is something that I aim to do. Like, brilliant, brilliant. Come on, lads. Man. Yeah, no, same. Obviously, it's just getting the opportunities and sort of seeing what happens with it and trying to make most of it as well. Because I think if you just put it, well, whatever you put in, you're gonna get out at the end of the day. So I don't know. I'd like to think it ends up somewhere. That's pretty pretty good. But yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think a lot of I think your I think you lads have. have I think we've all been saying and it just getting that getting that game time under your belt because you've been here there and everywhere probably yeah, getting yeah. a year or two into you and then who knows what you can do I think a lot of as we've discussed the key word in ch- 
championship and League One rugby is an experience in it, and I think yeah. you've got you've got a good season in you now. So I reckon a couple more, you've I think the world's your possibility. Yeah, yeah. we just got to well, just got to make the most of it. It's like yeah. uh, it's up to us really, isn't it? So just yeah, hopefully I feel good years and then see what happens. Uh, I'm happy days. Yeah, brilliant lads. Well, yeah. Uh, close it up I, think, I hope you enjoyed that seeing the lads have had uh, one of the <laughs> most interesting stories yeah, uh, in the league you've been to about every country maybe Australia <laughs> at one point who yeah, knows like, come on let's uh, <laughs> aim my lads Australia well, I think everything's on the plate for you lads you're not I think one lesson you can probably learn from watching this is take the risk give yourself a chance and go yeah. out and see see the country see the world see and and yeah, go out and yeah. test yourself. I think a lot of lads, uh, a lot of lads, I um, even some of them I even work with, and some of them that you hear loads of stories about lads who could be who could be superstars. But I think some of them they get stuck in wanting to stay in Yorkshire. I think the whole lads, whole whole lads are famous. <laughs> some of them are famous for <laughs> only staying in all. I think I think the West All team is like the best team in the conf- in the no- in the conference by about. A mile because they're yeah, all just yeah, yeah. should oh, be oh possible super league <laughs> players. So it's uh, I think yeah, if you're watching any any family members, any young lads, go and go and take the risk, go and push yourself to move places and and give give it a go because you if these lads are anything to go by, brilliant lads and they've learned a lot about life and I think we should uh, definitely advise anyone to do it. So brilliant, thank you for coming on today, lads and uh, yeah, we'll finish up there. Thank you. So I'm clear.